right, everybody, if you have a question for defensive coordinator Peter Sermon, go ahead and drop a note in the chat. All right, we'll start with Jeff Ferrado. Go ahead, Jeff. Peter, how you doing? Good morning, Jeff. How are you? I'm fine. I, I asked Justin about um, Brett Johnson uh, and his season. Just the fact that he was able to play every game is a, a victory for him, I'm sure. How do you think he played this year, and, and what did you think of what he's accomplished? Well, I'm uh, extremely proud of his perseverance. Uh, he's had uh, some significant setbacks, and for him to uh, continue on the path of, of being a, a great teammate, being a productive player for our team, uh, overcoming those, uh, those challenges, uh, you know, outside of football, I'm just, that, that, that's a lot, you know, the, the injury part of football is something that we're all aware of. Uh, however, the loneliness, um, that I think you experience when you're having those long-term rehabs, uh, you know, no one's, no one's there to share that burden, uh, with a, with a player. And for him to come back from those two back-to-backs, uh, I'm really proud of him as a young man. And did you have any particular expectation for how his season would go? And, and besides just being able to get through it, how do you think he's played? I really had uh, probably measured expectations, Jeff. It's, uh, you know, I don't, you know, sometimes the expectations that I have are really insignificant anyway. And, and if I did have them, I would never... Uh, probably share him with with the player, uh, but I thought he played well. You know, he he uh, I think he got better as the season went on, which is a another I think a testament to to how he handled it, uh, to the relationship that uh, Coach Browning and him share that uh, they can be constructive with each other. They have uh, extremely honest with each other and and good feedback uh, going back and forth with how he's feeling on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and and what they did to to uh, to help him get to to Saturday afternoons. Thanks. All right, we'll go to Steve Croner from the San Francisco Chronicle. Go ahead, Steve. Morning, Peter. Good morning, Steve. How are you? I'm doing okay, thank you. Good. Um, question I would have for you is, is there anybody in the Pac-12 or anybody in your three other non-conference games who, who, to which you would compare Texas Tech's offense? That's a great question. Uh, you know, uh, I would say probably there's quite a bit of similarities to uh, our team. You know, uh, you know, I think there's going to be some uh, some of that flavor, some of the some of some similarities and some formations. Uh, I believe they're going to come out uh, and try to run to execute some uh, some tempo, uh, get lined up and, and get these things going. Uh, they're going to rely heavily on on the run game. Uh, I think the the back uh, 28 Taj is going to be probably the most physical player that we've had the opportunity to play against this season. Uh, and I really think uh, very similar to, to you know, uh, Jaden for us is, you know, there's going to be some significant, uh, you know, leaning in to the run game uh, for both sides of the ball to, to come out and play well. Great, thank you. We'll go to Thomas Dunn. Go ahead, Thomas. Uh, good morning, Peter. How are you? Good morning, Thomas. How are you? Not too bad. So with the first uh, sequence of transfer portal somewhat satiated for the moment, who are some of the guys that have earned, a, earned an opportunity throughout this bowl practice session for Saturday's game? Well, uh, Tom, we're going to do our very best to, uh, to play at uh, more guys than we typically have. And I think that's uh, uh, really not, not necessarily a, a different philosophy, but uh, this is an opportunity for, for guys to, to show us what they have done through 12 weeks um, and to find roles for guys in, in different situations, special teams. I can speak for defense. I'm not, I'm not speaking on uh, behalf of the offense, but uh, special teams and defense to, to let these guys go out there and, and have this be a catapult opportunity going into the winter, going into the spring. Uh, so you're going to see, I think you're going to see quite a few guys. Um, you know, at, I can speak for the inside backers. We're going to do our very best to get uh, you know, all the guys that uh, that are up and, and we feel are prepared to play, get them in the game and and uh, let them go out there and, and uh, let them show uh, me and show the team what they've been working on all season. So they, I'm excited for those that group of guys to get out there and, and uh, get some significant play time. Thank you. Any other first round questions? All right, we'll go back to Jeff. Yeah, you, you mentioned the inside linebackers. 
Nate Ruchin is a guy who a couple years ago came in and made a big splash right off the bat, and um, he's you know kind of been in and out a little bit since then. But how do you think he's played, and where is he at in his game? Uh, Nate figures in. Uh, you know, he and uh, Serge are going to play uh, a lot. Okay, at uh, inside linebacker. So uh, Nate, unfortunately, was unavailable for a significant part of the season due to that uh, um, injury in fall camp. But he is he's battled back. Um, you know, he played in the four games uh, this season. And then as as the rule states, the bowl game does not count uh, as a fourth or a fifth uh, game for uh, redshirt um, scenarios. So we're excited that uh, he's going to be able to play in his uh, fifth game in the bowl game. And, uh, you know, he's he's been a... a very diligent player, a hardworking player, and you know, but the the quality about Nate is he has really some some big playmaking ability. So uh, I'm excited to get him out there in a more extended role and and uh, see what he can do for us. But he also does retain the redshirt era. He played in uh, four games. Yep. Thank you. Yes.